She clearly thinks that uh, she's unpopular in this country. I don't think she wants to come back to this country. It wouldn't surprise me if she never came back to this country, to be honest. Um, and I think that's where we are. It's, it's very, very sad. But uh, there, must be, there must be some moments in the middle of the night where Harry's lying there thinking to himself, has this really been worth it? You know, and and, and is, it, um, is there something I could have done differently? Yeah. Talking of birthdays, um, so the, the Conservative Party, obviously there's a, a general election being called in the UK, which, which means there are very few royal events at the moment. Yeah. But one of the, one of the flagship policies, um, Rishi Sunak, a uh, Conservative uh, leader suggested that all 18-year-olds could do or should do national service. So there will be a few members of the ro younger royals that are a little bit nervous about turning um, 18. Now, we have done a poll, a uh, Royal Exclusive on the Sun have, have, have done our first ever poll where we have asked viewers and readers of, of, of the Sun whether young royals should be made to do national service if this policy um, ever comes into action. And I think the results are 88, a staggering 88% believe that the younger royals should do national service. That's not really surprising, though, is it? Because the royals have a long history with serving in the, in the armed forces, you know, from, from, from William and Harry. Yeah, there's a long tradition of, of, of service. It was quite interesting, a couple of years ago, there was a story that was leaked uh, attributed to a friend of Prince William, saying that he and, and Kate didn't want to put George under any pressure and they wouldn't make him go into the services if he didn't want to. I don't think they wanted a situation where um, a repeat of Prince Edward, who of course famously went into the Marines for a few months and then had to quit, so that was, that was very embarrassing. <laughs> And also, uh, Prince William has written and spoken about mental health issues and how people shouldn't be made to do service if they're not uh, really cut out for it. So it's quite interesting that this, this subject has now come up. Of course, if the polls are the same people telling us that uh, Labour are going to sweep to power, this is all a bit academic, because uh, if the Tories don't get in, this isn't going to happen. But I suspect that when it comes to it in, in, in 8, 10 years' time, 15 years' time, by that time, he'll have grown up a lot, George, and it wouldn't surprise me if he wants to do royal service in the armed forces. You know, he volunteers for it himself. So I don't think he'll be, have to be made to do it. I think he'll want to do it, probably. If Harry and Meghan ever came back, I mean, as you very pointed out, we don't think we'll ever see Meghan on his shores again. No. That could put Archie in line, or, or, or Lilibet, you know. Yes, I don't line. think we can make an American citizen do armed, service, armed forces uh, service for us, but uh, so I don't think that's going to happen. But um, no, this is one of the strange things. You know, a lot of people think that they should be stripped of their uh, line of succession uh, position. Um, I can sympathise with that. It's not easy to do. It needs all sorts of uh, protocol to be done. But um, if things get a lot worse, if they, if I mean, they seem to be calming down a little bit at the moment. But if they launched an, another series of attacks on the royal family, then the, the pressure might build up to to take action to strip them of the titles and strip them of that. But uh, I can't. I don't think the king wants to make the situation worse. Uh, he doesn't want to provoke them, and he is still hoping at some point for a reconciliation. So I don't think uh, anything will happen soon. That's a really interesting point because the, the, there is a lot of chat about a lot of people claiming that the king could take them out of um, the line of succession or, or, or you know strip them of their of their titles and, and it's been notable and i do say this a lot it has been notable that duke and duchess of sussex harry and Meghan, have calmed down a little bit they aren't throwing so many insults do, do you maybe think that because they've looked further down the line and thought that that could be some kind of punishment that was on offer? i think i think they've got well you know more about this than i do matt but they've got new pr people i mean if they listen to their pr people and some sometimes people don't listen to their pr people but if they listen to their pr people i'm sure they're telling them that you, yeah right you've made your point you had spare you had netflix you had the opera winfrey interview you've got it all off your chest now's the time to row back a bit and try and try and build some bridges or, or actually or at least create a life for yourself and obviously the Nigeria trip, they were trying to do that. Um, the jury's out as to whether that was a good idea. I mean, some people called it a sort of quasi-royal tour, and I'm not sure that uh, the palace would have been particularly happy about it. But um, we can't stop them doing these things if they want to. Um, but it's now time for them really to, to focus on positive things and not just keep uh, slagging off the royal family. Yeah, I think they are trying, but you talk about their team. You know, I'm constantly interested in, mm. in who they have around them because, you know, the, Prince William and, 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 and King Charles, they would have a private secretary. They would have a team, they, they would have a team that links into uh, foreign, the, the, you know, the Foreign Office or to embassies overseas. Harry and Meghan don't have that. So right. if they were mentioned about Nigeria, so if they were potentially that we hear that they might want to go on more tours without the, 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 the they might have a good PR team or have a PR, you know, people spinning everything good that they are doing when they go on these tours, they need 
uh, private secretary systems. They, they need um, staff that can help them on the ground, link up with embassies, link up with, 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 with you know, other, with, with the government and, and, and the foreign office and stuff like that. That's something that, that concerns me. Um, going forward. Yeah. I mean, they could, they could very easily have, you know, blundered into some kind of political problem in Nigeria. Um, I mean, all right, Charles isn't head of state in Nigeria, but it's obviously a very important country, very prominent member of the Commonwealth. So, you know, there is a danger that they could easily blunder into some sort of diplomatic incident if they make the wrong moves and get blamed almost as if they are royals, even though they're not representing the royal family. So it's a difficult one. But, um, you know, they're playing to a global audience. Uh, they're not just playing to, to the Commonwealth or to the British public. In fact, the British public is probably the last thing on their mind. You know, they're, they're playing to their audience in America, uh, around the world, and that's what they're going to concentrate on. Yeah, 100%. When we opened, Phil, I explained, obviously, that you've been working in the, in the 80s and 90s. Yes. And what I love to hear, and we have discussed stuff like this in the past, but what I love to hear is, um, is, is some old interaction with royals and old kind of events. So going back to the, your, your early days when yes. you were reporting for The Sun, yes. what kind of leaps out? You know, what, what, do you tell, what would you tell your grandchildren? You know? what, what's well, lots, the ones that you bore people things, down the pub with? Lots of things leap out. I mean, obviously, I was very lucky to be in an era when we were following Diana around the world, Charles and Diana. And we didn't just go uh, on royal tours. We went on their holidays as well. So we went to all the ski ski trips and the Virgin Islands. I'm not interrupting you, but you weren't invited on those holidays, were no, you? No, we weren't invited, no. But they, it was kind of... Um, that, that we, we came to a sort of tacit agreement where we'd take some photographs on the first day and then, theoretically, we left them alone. But we had we had to stay in the ski resort to make sure that there were no sort of, you know, problems. Um, so yeah. it, was, uh, it was like a sort of free ski holiday, really. But uh, but anyway, it was... Uh, but but, but to be serious, I mean, some of the you know iconic moments that I was with, I always remember in Brazil, we went to Brazil, and uh, at the time she was very much doing this campaign about AIDS, and she picked up a, an AIDS baby in an orphanage mm. in Sao Paulo, and uh, even some of my hard-bitten colleagues were in tears, but the, the, the nurses were in tears because they'd never had anyone like this, you know, there was this stigma about AIDS at the time. So it was really groundbreaking. Uh, and uh, to be there when she was doing some of this stuff was uh, was looking back on it was it was you know quite historically important. So stuff like that stands out. I mean, funnily enough, one of the greatest um, pinch me moments I had was when I was covering Princess Anne, and uh, she was the first uh, royal in sort of modern times to go to Moscow when when the Berlin Wall had come down and uh, Gorbachev was in power. And I was lucky enough to uh, get the to, to draw the short straw as the person who had to go into the Kremlin. Uh, and um, cover the event, and it was an incredibly boring event. Actually, it was, uh, there was all they did was talk about the weather, if I seem to remember. But I stood there in in the office of the president of Russia, or president of the Soviet Union, at the time, Gorbachev, in his office, and I'm thinking to myself, not many people get to do this. It's probably where Putin now sits, and uh, so it was uh, quite a remarkable moment, and uh, not many people can say that. So th this job does, as you know, takes you to some amazing places, and. Um, you know, and it enables you to do some incredible things that you wouldn't otherwise do. You're very lucky with Princess Anne. But I don't do I don't do enough Princess Anne jobs. She's no. going to be at D Day next week, and she's doing a, a lot of jobs. She, 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 I think in the last few years, especially since the Queen died, and people saw how she reacted and stayed with her, stayed with her coffin mm. all the way, and uh, saw how hard she works. I think she's now finally getting the credit she deserves. I mean, going back sort of 40, 50 years ago, she got a terrible press. She hated the press. She used to tell us to. <clears throat> naff off, uh, which is uh, frequently quoted in the press, uh, and she ha she hated us, and she got a bad press. 